It's amazing! Taiwan. What an incredible place to cycle tour. We get a lot of questions and interest about our cycle touring trip around the island of Taiwan. So in this video, we thought we'd look back at some of the highlights of our journey and provide a quick overview of what it's like to bike tour there. Just to get some of the basics out of the way, we spent three months on this tiny, beautiful, and culturally packed island from mid-October to mid-January 2018-19 and cycled a route that is not the typical round-the-island itinerary, i.e. we didn't stick to the one. So beautiful. We should also mention that we were there so long because we did some volunteer work, which we'll touch on in a bit. Most people spend two to three weeks riding the island, but we personally love the extra time to explore. We'll link our route in the description, and if you want to see some of our videos from the trip, check out our Cycling Taiwan playlist. We vlogged our whole adventure so you can really get a sense of what it's like. So, with some route advice and guidance from a local who's cycled near every road on the island, check out Andrew's blog for route tips, which we'll link in the description below. We cycled from Taipei to the west coast, and then went promptly into the hills, stopping in Taichung, then back into the mountains to visit Yushan National Park. Next, we cycled the coffee road to Kaohsiung, with a quick trip to Shaoluchu, then around the bottom of the island and up the east coast, back to Taipei to complete the loop. Almost forgot, we also made a little inland journey to Taroko Gorge. You can't miss that. All right, let's see what it's like. Taiwan is a cycle tourist dream. Great cycling, tasty food, beautiful scenery, and friendly people. Like many cyclists, we're guessing you've heard cycling in Taiwan is pretty awesome. And we'd have to agree. We loved it, plain and simple. You'll most likely start in the capital of Taipei, where you'll find an array of bustling night markets serving up all sorts of tasty street food delights. Alright, I'm about to try the octopus. Good. That's pretty tasty. Yeah. It's a winner. We'd recommend at least a couple days here to acclimate and see some of the sights. While some think of Taiwan as an island of smog and factories, this really only applies to parts of the west coast of the island. So if you can handle some climbing, we recommend heading inland to avoid the smog and industrial city sprawl and experience the lush, green jungles and incredible mountain ranges instead. Also, don't be surprised to see some monkeys along the way. Oh my god! And did we mention that Taiwan also has a plethora of waterfalls hidden amongst its lush mountains and valleys? Our first Taiwanese waterfall. Check out Xiao Fei's blogs for more info. We'll put a link in the description. There are also smaller islands you can explore by ferry, and don't miss swimming with sea turtles. This was definitely a highlight of our trip on the island of Shaoluchu. Weather. The weather in Taiwan can get crazy, so do plan ahead to avoid the heat and the heart of typhoon season, i.e. don't go in summer. That'd be June, July, and August. And always be aware of what's predicted weather-wise. <laughs> yeah, with your rain coat head on. I just changed mine too, it's quite nice. <laughs> I'm practically getting blown off my bike. Also, it back. might take some adjusting for your body to get Good used to the humidity. Sports bra. Is why it going? Yeah, it could be. Taiwan experiences earthquakes being in the ring of fire, so something to be aware of. And don't forget about the incredible sunrises. Make it a point to see one while you're in Alishan or Yushan, if you can. Oh wow, over there too. Behind us that way is cool. This is gonna be amazing. The sun is still coming up and over. They're epic. The roads. Woohoo! Not going uphill anymore. The roads are paved oh, everywhere. I gotta change my gears. 
and usually it's the silky smooth tarmac variety. Seriously, Taiwan, your roads win an award in our cycling books. Even in the tiny countryside towns we went through, and random village roads in the hills, we found the paths paved. So you shouldn't have to worry about an unexpected off-road adventure. Steep grades. Things in Taiwan go up abruptly, so get those climbing legs ready. But nothing that a granny gear can't handle. I think we only had to push that one time. This is insane. Ah. Oh my god, you can't you can't even go up this. It's so bloody steep. Oh, there's not even a chance. Oh, oh it's hard just to push. Oh, yikes. But the descents are always flowy and fun and so worth the climbing. The people. Friendly people abound. And cycling in Taiwan has grown very popular recently, so expect to get a lot of cheering, friendly waves, thumbs up, and jayos, jayos. <laughs> It's really fun to feel like you're a part of something special when you cycle around Taiwan. Of course, knowing some Mandarin will really help your trip, but it's not necessary, as we found most people speak some English. <laughs> Accommodation. We did a lot of wild camping. We found that no one bothered us, and we always made sure to be out early, with some warm showers and couch surfing stays in the cities. We also stayed in a school for a night, and I've heard you can camp at temples and police stations, but we never tried it. So we had heard that you can camp at camp at elementary schools, primary schools, whatever, high schools, I'm not really sure if that's doable, uh, all around Taiwan. So we thought we would test out the theory today, and here we are, look at this. It's like a full-on apartment. Mm -hmm. Got bunks. Got got a bathroom. There's a wet room shower. I could wash my clothes. This is crazy. Soap and everything over there. We just have to be out by 6:30 tomorrow morning before the kids get here. And uh, yeah, that's it. So first night riding in Taiwan, we've got a bedroom to ourselves. What do you think about that? Awesome. Food. Taiwan has an array of delicious food, and in the towns and cities, there are roadside stops on nearly every street. There are convenience stores everywhere, so you probably won't have trouble sourcing snacks and even meals there. 7-Eleven yeah, is like the oasis for anybody driving, motorcycling, cycling. It's just packed. Packed they have their own cafe over there. We also had no problem stocking up on bread and peanut butter, and the fresh fruit in Taiwan is so good. And don't miss out on eating the xiaolongbao, the soup dumplings, and drinking some nai cha, that's milk tea, that Taiwan is so famous for. Oh my god, they put a fried dough stick in here. That's amazing. It is so good. The East Coast, wow. We liked saving this for last, though the winds were definitely against us as we pedaled north. But we were also there in the wind season, i.e. December, January, and we got through it okay. It's a little bit windy. We're going that way. The sparsely populated east coast will blow your mind. In our case, pun intended. With gorgeous coastline and stunning views. It's a totally different vibe. This is where you can head to the famous Taroko Gorge, which we highly recommend cycling. Things get intense if you want to cycle the whole thing, or you can just do an out and back, which is what we did. We were also able to camp for free at Lu Shui Campground, which is just off the road and you can easily find it on Google Maps. What a day! Yeah. So we mentioned doing volunteer work in Taiwan. And that was through the Woofing Network. The what? Yes, that stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. With our membership, we were able to volunteer on organic farms and have unique homestay experiences. We definitely recommend, if that's something you're interested in, 
Link in the description. Indigenous peoples. Taiwan's people are not originally of Chinese origin, but Austronesian. We recommend learning about the many different ethnic groups on the island. And if you head inland at all, you most likely ride through some of their land. This was another highlight for us for sure, especially staying and volunteering with Aless, an indigenous woman and her family at their home in Dewana near Taitung. If you don't have time for a longer stay, definitely visit the National Museum of Prehistory in Taitung and go to the cafe there to get an authentic meal prepared by Aless herself. One last thing to note is that the section from the Taroko Gorge area to Yilan can be a little dicey with no shoulder, a lot of trucks, and a high cliff. So many cyclists opt for taking the train for this section, which is exactly what we did when we saw that the day was offering torrential rain and a headwind. A sign, right? Which brings us to transportation. The train system in Taiwan is top notch and you can bring your bike on almost all trains, except from the airport. They're not allowed on that train good thing to remember. But always check online or with a train agent for the most updated information. Overall, we absolutely loved our time cycling in Taiwan. The people are so welcoming. We loved our hosts we stayed with. Yeah. <laughs> the food is super tasty and the scenery amazing and packed in. It's one of the most welcoming and progressive countries in Asia. I mean, we got to join their pride parade in Taipei. We'll also be making a more detailed guide to cycling Taiwan, but if you have anything to add that you think someone should know about or if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. Just making this video makes us want to return ASAP, and I know someday we will. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. That helps the video and tells YouTube to show it to more people. And if you'd like to see more cycle touring content, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications by hitting that bell. We have lots more to share from our trip and we'll be making cycling guides for more countries, including parts of Europe, Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. This is just unreal. <laughs> oh my word. For now, happy adventurous cycling wherever you are. And remember to rat on. on.